Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for being with us today. I love having you with us. Now, what we're going to talk about today is very close to your heart if you are a member of our Scottish community because we're going to talk about how to make your own clan not good or, or sort of good, but great. And why is it important to think about this now? We haven't had a Scottish Games in a very long time, and we don't exactly know when they resume, although they're getting a pretty good start this year. There have been a lot of games taking place, and it might just be the right time to think about your own clan and think about how it could be better. Just yesterday, an old friend of mine from the Scottish community wrote and asked for my opinion on how you can make a happy, successful, and vibrant clan organization who keeps members. That's important, keeping members. I guess he asked me, since I've been around a very long time in all of this, and probably have been to as many annual general meetings of different clans, visited more clan tents, and have worked intimately with as many groups over the years as anybody. I have seen the good, the very good, I have seen the bad, and sometimes, my goodness, the ugly. The reason for the question yesterday, he wrote, was that his own clan is in trouble. From what I've heard recently, many clans are losing members, and it surely doesn't help that Highland Games are just now getting started again. Prior to this, I know of several Highland Games who have not taken place because of not enough volunteerism in both their communities and in the Scottish community. There is no difference in a Scottish clan group than any other group to which you belong, except that most of the time the Scottish group is scattered all over the country and most of the time all over the world. The distance between members is a very special problem which requires very special solutions. Think about the percentage of members who can attend games. I know of one clan that has way over a thousand members and if there are 40, 50, 60 people at a games, they consider it a nice crowd. Most of the time, what a member gets from his membership dues is a newsletter of some kind. I have to say right here, I am an editor of several clans newsletters and I have been editor of a clan newsletter probably of one kind or another for the last 20 years, so I know of which I speak. You would be surprised at the newsletters that are mailed to members sporadically, often arriving days or even weeks after an advertised event has taken place, or people just do not get a newsletter at all. So when asked about this kind of thing, I always suggest that the newsletter editor, the newsletter editor is one of the most important people in the group. A timely, interesting publication will go a long ways towards retaining members. It cannot be late. You have to have a deadline. You have to stick to the deadline. I have gotten in real trouble and even gotten fired as a newsletter editor because I insisted upon a deadline and getting it out on time. Please make your newsletters all inclusive. I once received a regional newsletter of maybe six pages and the regional commissioner's photograph was on each and every page and on a couple of pages more than once. There were maybe five or six members mentioned in the publication beside the regional commissioner, but they were all some kind of an officer. I was once told, oh, that story about the sick baby of one of our members just isn't important. Don't put that in. Instead, I was told to publish two articles on the exact same event written by two other officers of the group. Folks, you have to include as many of your members as you can in your publication. The story about the sick baby was important. The stories about a member who is ill or hurt or celebrates a birthday or anniversary or gets a promotion or is honored by his professional peers or somebody who has passed away, 
even if that member was not known personally by the head of the group. It, that's all important. Be sure your newsletter appears the number of times each year that you told the new member it would appear. Be sure the newsletter is about all of your members as best you can. The how of this is pretty easy. Just publish a little box asking members to let you know what's happening in their lives and then use what they send. Don't rewrite articles that you get so much that the person doesn't recognize it. Edit for spelling and grammar, but that's it. Let the person's personality show. It's so obvious, but it's amazing how many times this rule is broken. And amazingly, it is just what you have to do, what you should do, what you should want to do. My goodness, be friendly to your members. That's right, be friendly. Why should someone pay dues to a group who ignores him or her when they travel a long way, pay for a hotel and food and buy a ticket to get in and get all dressed up in new Scottish finery and then nobody even acknowledges their presence? It costs nothing to smile and say, Oh my goodness, we are so glad you're here. Come in and stay a while with us. Did I say to be friendly more than a dozen or two times? If you have food, invite your members to come in and, and enjoy a picnic with their fellow clansmen. If you have just a snack, invite them in to join you in a snack. If you're in charge of the tent, make sure there will be plenty of goodies, be it sometimes simple. If you plan a get-together after the games, please invite everybody. Make a big poster for somewhere on the tent that gives all the information about the time and location of the event. Maybe some flyers ahead of time you could make and be sure everyone gets one and that everybody knows they are invited. I don't know at the times I have come back to the games on, on a Sunday only to hear people talking about this wonderful time they had at the clan party the night before that nobody told me about. It requires some planning and just a little bit of work before the games. So, that's what it's all about, isn't it? In these days of email, just email all of the members and invite everybody beforehand. Give the details of the get-together well before the event. To discover your own clan had an event at the last games or last night and you were not invited is just not a good way to retain a member, don't you think? It's happened to me, and it does hurt your feelings, and it hurt mine, whether you show it or not. There are lots more you can do. Invite members to help with projects and to be officers. Recognize those who work at the games or who volunteer to help put on a games. Be sure to keep the politics of the clan positive and upbeat. Be sure that huge ego problems do not interfere with your clan activities or attitudes. Just do not allow improper behavior at your clan tent, and this includes overindulging in adult beverages. Just do not allow loud, angry voices. And always remember, we are all family. We'll talk about this subject again if you wish, as there is much more to be covered. Just think how you would feel if you were the new member of your group. Remember, longtime members are important, too. If you wish to disagree with me, that's you're right, but please do think about what I've said today. If you want to make your fan your clan a real family, these things do make sense. I'm always glad to help. Just email me at Beth Scribble at AOL dot com. Thank you so much for being with us. You'll come back again next time.